Hey, I'm Stevie. This is Elvis and this is Dooley. And uh, today I am going to tell you about how I do my mahi. So I am based in Wellington and am predominantly a performer, but um, as we all do, uh, I kind of do like a little bit of everything. The most solo type work that I've done is Massive Crushes and Tiny Debts, both by U15, um, which are not solo shows, they are polylogues. So that means there are a lot of performers each performing a monologue. Um, is it a monologue or a soliloquy? <laughs> Thanks, Barnes. Um, so talking about solo work, I am actually not filming this by myself. I've got little Barney Olsen here behind the camera. Can you give us a wave, Barney? Oh, they won't be able to see. Okay. Um, and yeah, I've got my dogs here to help me feel calm about speaking about myself. Um, when we did work on Massive Crushes, we started just doing one-on-one -on -one rehearsals with Izzy McKinnon, who was our director. Um, and then closer to performance time, we moved into big group rehearsals. I had such a fun time performing Beryl. That was my character from Massive Crushes, I think. One of my like one of my top characters that I've ever played. She has this wonderful capacity to play with the audience. It doesn't necessarily feel like totally solo work because the audience is always there um, if they come to the show. Um, and you can use them as a scene partner. You can play off them, you can respond to how they are responding to what you're doing, you can play with with pause, you can build tension. In the Massive Crushes, Izzy and I worked very um, closely together to determine all of the different rhythms of the scene, of the monologue. One of the biggest differences for me performing on stage alone as opposed to performing on stage with another person when you have a dialogue is you don't have anybody to like bounce off in terms of lines. You're like responsible for knowing this whole chunk of text by yourself. One of the ways that I combat that is by grounding myself in movement. So remembering stuff in my body as well as in my head and just really knowing the, the arc of the monologue. So nutting down where you want to build up momentum, where you want to build up the energy, where you want it to peak, where you want it to drop, where you want to um, hold tension. Really, I feel, really I like view it like, um, this is kind of silly, but I feel like I'm David Bowie in Labyrinth and I've got the audience is like the crystal ball and I'm like, whoo, shoo. But we did Massive Crushes twice, once at the beginning of the year in Fringe and um, once at the end of the year. And those felt like two incredibly different performances for me just based on what was happening in my own life. At the beginning of the year, um, I had just come out of doing Hamlet which is very much like an ensemble piece but you are alone on stage talking to the audience for quite a lot of the um quite a lot of the show when we did it the very first time I felt very much like I was able to control like how the vibe was in the room based on how my energy was um, it felt very like fresh and alive and exciting. When we did it at the end of the year, I had some really intense family stuff going on. And so it felt, it felt like just me going through the motions, trying to get through the 10 minutes so that I could then sit backstage and like spend some time just, um, and close my eyes and listen to everyone else's amazing, um, monologues. But I don't think that what all of the people who came to see both of those shows didn't see any of that like major difference in them. There was just like, for me, there was that difference, which was a really wonderful way of realizing how much the, the skills that we build into a performance in our rehearsal can hold us and carry us through in a performance even if we can't feel like we're 100% there with the emotions of the piece. Another thing about 
working in a polylog instead of just doing a whole solo show is that there are also energy from all these incredible other people that you are performing with that you know have performed before you and will perform after you um, and having that space to just sit backstage and um, and listen to all these amazing people put this incredible work out there and hearing the audience respond to that there's there's something so special in that um, yeah so those are those are some of my thoughts on solo performance and on the solo performance that I have done um, I have been Stevie this has been Elvis this has been my thumb which has been chewed, chewed up chewed to pieces um, and thanks to Tahi for asking me to do this video um, I hope there's something in it that is useful for someone watching. Um, cool. Bye.